Guys, we're reading from The Awakener. We're on chapter three. <coughs> I'm Reverend Crystal Cox. And as always as usual, please consider donating to our church at bbgoddesschurch at gmail.com. Okay, page 32, chapter three. The pattern of evolution and learning on earth. Evolution requires the soul to learn unconditional spiritual love. Each soul incarnates as many times as necessary into some level of energy. In order to obtain the learning and wisdom necessary, he or she plans out in a lifetime to concentrate on specific spiritual qualities such as patience, humility, integrity, wisdom, power, hope, clarity, compassion, truth, gentleness, patience, thoughtfulness, kindness, harmony, respect, faith, peace, and on and on and on and on. <coughs> Love, balance, forgiveness, understanding, dedication, devotion, purity, divine will, freedom, trust, and love. Whew! That's a lot. It's a good thing we only picked a couple of those to focus on. <coughs> As a bean, not a bean, I haven't even smoked anything, but a bean, a bean, okay, as a being <laughs> grows, becoming wiser and more loving, his own vibration becomes lighter and finer, allowing him or her to perceive higher and finer levels of existence, higher dimensions. Each person has his or her own unique energy vibration, which we are recognizing when we feel someone is instantly familiar or feels comfortable. Whilst each being always holds this special energy, their overall vibrational field alters depending on the current level of evolution he or she is at. Their vibrational band determines the world he or she sees. So you really are looking through your own lens of your own belief system, your own perspective. You can literally be sitting next to someone and they see something different. Um, there are no facts and truth. There's only subjective perspective. Believe it, don't believe it. That's kind of the point, right? Okay. All dimensions exist in the now, but we can only see things that lie within the vibrational band of light that we resonate with, that matches us. Kind of like tuning into a radio station. You can't hear 103 if you're tuned into 106. You are the receiver and you tune into a certain frequency and that's literally what you see. What you experience. Okay, wisdom and love raise one's vibration, taking it from dense, slower moving frequencies to faster, finer frequencies. The earth was once a perfect ball <laughs> This is cracking me up. Okay, the earth was once a perfect ball of evenly distributed energy. She agreed to sharing a learning process with humanity, and so began the pattern of learning through limitation. The experience of this learning has caused an uneven distribution of this energy through the use of negative thought. This pattern has been taken to its greatest learning potential and could be considered to be complete. Earth agreed to this joint learning with man and had a deep understanding of the various possibilities that could occur. She operates from a place of love and does not feel anger about the apparent destruction of her form. Everything in the universe is done by agreement. Everything. She watches with love and perceives the struggle within humanity to overcome all the barriers they have set themselves. Everyone on Earth is special and unique. Each has its own role to play in the overall scheme of things. If each follows what he feels right to say or do, then he or she will be carrying out their part in that plan. If instead you permit yourself to do that which you should do, often through guilt, you are liable to be stepping outside of your agreement. And, and I teach this all the time about if you choose anything you don't want to do, then you're letting your consciousness, your your quantum receiver, your body know that you like that and bring more of it. So if something's just even a little bit more exciting, you choose that. If someone invites you to a barbecue and you're like, I don't really want to go, but I feel obligated to go, and you go, then you're creating more of that reality of obligation and guilt and of not doing what you want, literally. 
I know that's the word for this video, but this, this is a physical manifestation of actual life. Cha you know, you can, you're moving dimensions. It's not, it's not figurative, which just blows my mind. Clearly. See my mind just blown. Okay. It's time to let go and let God. Let go and let goddess. This is truly taking responsibility. To achieve this requires patience. The modern world promises us instant results. Credit, fame, wealth, entertainment. I didn't get any of those promises. Okay, I might have had credit once upon a time, but that was decades ago. <clears throat> I digress. Relief from colds and pain and instant communication through satellites, faxes. How old is this book, right? Mobile phones and computers. We are not used to waiting and often become impatient when we have to wait in queues and traffic lights. In order to let go and let God, let go, let goddess, we need to bring a stillness into our life and be willing to wait patiently, allowing each moment to unfold according to divine order. This would mean not taking things into our own hands, but trusting in each moment that we will feel what is the highest order. Trust, delight in God's will, goddess's will, I added that of course, commit yourself to spirit, be still, and be patient. And after that it says Psalms of David 37. As you make this connection as a spiritual being, <laughs> there's that spiritual being again, uh, follow your heart and feeling of righteousness without hesitation. If it feels right for you to help the dolphins save the rainforest, increase awareness of, ch of child abuse, or do nothing, the range is endless. This is part of your agreement. So when you feel inspired to do something, um, I'll see if I can read it without the glasses. Okay, when you feel an inspiration, that's your higher self. When you feel joy and excited about something, that's your higher self letting you know that's the thing to do. And then even if people go, oh, well, you, you screwed up and that didn't work out, it always works out. It, if, if you weren't meant to do it, you wouldn't have been excited about it in the first place. What someone else's perception of working out, it doesn't even exist. What does working out mean? Well, you wanted to experience that. You were excited about it. You experienced it for a reason. And so trust that. Always. Every time. However, because this is right for you, it does not have to mean that it's also right for others. Each has its own task to do, and if you permit yourself to be talked into what you should be doing, these are my air quotes, see, you will not be able to carry out what you are really meant to be doing in that moment. If you do what feels right in the heart from a place of love and not from fear or guilt, then you can trust that you are in the divine flow. From that place, you can intuitively sense the next move. It is time for everyone on this planet to make a choice about the sort of world they wish to live on. One of peace and love, um, or the world we see now upon the earth. Um, that's what we're doing right now. We are making a decision of what world we want to live in on every thought, every choice we make or don't make, every choice we make because we're guilt-tripped or we don't want to offend somebody or we don't want to hurt someone else's feeling. Every choice we make for someone else's version of us, then we're saying that's the kind of earth that we want. Is that the kind of earth that you want? <laughs>